I'm sure we're all familiar with violence in fictional media. Whether it's in film, television or video games, scenes of violence from intense torture to dramatic shootouts are becoming more and more commonplace, and with it the ever-resurfacing debate that we are becoming desensitised to it. As an avid watcher of horror films and violent media in general, if anyone was going to be desensitised in this way, it would probably be me. And yet, I found the violence in Channel 4's dark comedy Utopia to be uniquely upsetting. While dealing with government conspiracies and shady underground networks, the series follows a small group of individuals, Becky, Ian, Wilson and Grant, who come into the possession of the manuscript sequel to a graphic novel that has seemingly predicted the worst disasters of the last century. They then become targets for those who seek the manuscript, known only as the network, and find themselves pulled deeper and deeper into a conspiracy that threatens their lives. And perhaps this bizarre outlandish premise is one of the things that contributes to how we experience violence in the series. Like the graphic novel the series centres around, the show itself is filmed in a way that is deliberately comic-like, deliberately distorted by stylized composition and oversaturated colours, still camera work that mirrors the format of comic book panels, giving an appearance that seems overall unreal. As well as comic books, director Mark Munden has specified the Technicolor palette of 1950s Hollywood as a direct influence, saying how normally the way you'd colour a piece of cinematography is by constructing it with greens, blues and reds. The three-strip Technicolor process we use is comprised of the opposite colours, yellows, cyans, magentas. I was interested in Doris Day films from the 1950s that pushed these distinct elements. Even though Munden cites Doris Day here, when thinking of early Technicolor what immediately comes to mind is the 1939 adaptation of The Wizard of Oz where Technicolor was used in contrast to the more familiar black and white to create a land of fantasy and magic, a paradise, a utopia. But in referencing this visual language, Munden's utopia only undermines the concept of its title. The Technicolor here is perhaps less reminiscent of the romance of classic Hollywood than it is in tune with the more sinister handling of Technicolor in the cult TV series The Prisoner, which paints its bright, cheerful colours as a facade to placate its prisoners, its idyllic, utopian village, obviously fake. This is how Technicolor looks to us today. Fake. And Utopia pushes this falsity wherever it can. In its perfectly framed settings, its caricatured characters, its extravagant conspiracies. All to suddenly confront us with scenes like this. While the violence in Utopia might be similarly stylized, its effect is far more powerful than is commonly seen in television or even film. One reason for this is that so many of the show's deaths are just normal people who happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, and the series deliberately crafts these characters as innocent. Take, for example, the very first scene. Set in a comic book shop, in order to leave no trail, Lee and Arby kill anyone inside. The tension is built from the first hit, to the gas that may or may not be lethal, to revealing that the gas certainly is lethal, to finding that there is another person in the shop, a child. The first, but by no means the only child to die in the series. Don't put the gas away yet. But targeting average, even vulnerable people isn't the most important principle in constructing this kind of uncomfortable violence. After all, that's not exactly unique to Utopia. What sets the series apart is the immediacy, the sudden brutality of its assaults, especially when set against the cheerful yellows that characterise the show's visual style. The violence might seem gratuitous or over the top, as it has been accused of being, but it's really just that it's framed in a way that's unfamiliar. It's possibly exaggerated, but not in the way that we're used to seeing. There's often no editing, no theatrical cuts or shaky cam, no dramatic build-up or standoff, not even a scream. Despite the emphasis on style when it comes to the series' colour and composition, when it comes to its violence, all cinematic cues are absent. There are none of the techniques that might make the violence more digestible for the audience. It isn't necessarily that the violence is over the top, but just that the way it disrupts the viewing experience, both within its own stylistic choices and the wider context of cinema and television, is deeply uncomfortable. And this dissonance is what makes the whole series so uncomfortable, being defined by a set of oppositions but not keeping these opposites separate. Lines between our world and the world of the show are repeatedly blurred, particularly in the second series which uses genuine news footage and weaves its narrative into real-world political events, such as the assassinations of Aldo Moreau, Richard Sykes and Airy Neve in the 70s. Establishing shots will often emphasise nature, but the colours remain overly saturated and artificial. Even the genre of the series, being a dark comedy, means that it is consistently navigating between laughter and distress. Every component of the series is in a fine balance, a sort of conflict that reflects the show's complicated ethical dilemma, which isn't easily divided into entirely right or wrong, with characters even switching sides. But this betrayal of one side for another is in turn indicative of how each half infects its other. 
whether it's between fiction and reality, natural and artificial, comedy and tragedy, or utopia and dystopia. And so, as an audience, you never quite know where you stand. Uncertainty is a big part of what might make something unsettling or disturbing. And in addition to its own abruptness, the violence in Utopia feeds off the anxiety produced by every component of its structure. Our heightened awareness of technical inconsistency, the expectation that at any point the sliding scale of oppositions could suddenly favour the other extreme keeps us constantly on edge. The build-up of tension that you might expect before a fight or a jump scare exists continuously throughout each episode without ever providing relief. This ensures that, even when the violence is only implied rather than explicitly shown, its emotional impact remains the same. The idea of being desensitised to violence revolves around that violence being familiar, cinematic and so overly fictionalised in a way that's easy to endure or even a way that's entertaining. Unfortunately, Utopia itself succumbed, at least to this familiarity, in the second season where the show began to feel more formulaic, with endearing characters predictably introduced only to inevitably be killed off by the end of the scene. Not that the series entirely lost its impact, but I felt that the violence here was definitely a lot easier to handle. Shock is a difficult thing to sustain. But still, Utopia showed that, even in an age when we have constant access to violence and gore, it can still be used to emotional effect. In distancing itself from the conventions we've come to expect, its depiction of violence, while frank, isn't simple. Because violence isn't simple. Whether it's against an individual, against a nation, or against the world. And the iconic yellow bag, the bearer of Lee's trademark weapons, becomes an ironic smiley face, showing the destruction that can result from good intentions. Everyone, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Utopia is one of my all-time favourite shows so if you have any thoughts about the series or the ideas in the video please let me know down in the comments and I'll hopefully see you in the next video.